All right, it is time to tackle Leprechaun 2, which came out just one year after the first one in 1993, and giving us a completely different cast with, of course, the same famous Leprechaun played by Warwick Davis in full effect. But uh, we have a completely new story having nothing to do with the first film whatsoever. And uh, in my opinion, this one does a lot of things right. Um, I really feel like this film merits having have been the original Leprechaun. Like this is the one that feels Irish, feels Leprechaun, feels Paddy's Day, especially because it takes place on St. Paddy's Day, uh, which is something in the first film that you think about and you're like, when you're dealing with a leprechaun and when you're dealing with this whole Irish lore, don't you want to kind of milk all that that you can instead of just having a leprechaun who kills people and uh, doing the whole gold thing? Don't you kind of want to go deeper with that lore? And Leprechaun 2 does in a lot of ways. So the film starts off in Ireland, um, making it very traditional. And um, the leprechaun is chasing this guy down named William and William is basically a prisoner of the leprechaun he's being held captive with like he has like a collar around his throat and and uh, because William tried to steal the leprechaun's gold now the leprechaun um, basically has him hostage basically he's he's, uh, he's his prisoner essentially and uh, the leprechaun is a thousand years old in this timeline so like this is like back in the old days the Leprechaun is a thousand years old, and in the original movie, in modern times, in 1993, the Leprechaun said that he was 600 years old. So, this is where I mentioned in the last video that timelines don't uh, add up. Going back to that, these are films that you literally have to just not pay attention to context or lore or continuity whatsoever, because they just, they don't obviously keep continuity going whatsoever. So you really just have to go with everything. There's some ser theories that I've, I've heard that maybe like there's a there's an array of leprechauns like there's a bunch of them so every movie has a different leprechaun which is a good theory. I mean I could I could get behind that but it's still being played by Warwick Davis so um, I'm just gonna go that I'm just gonna go with the producers and the directors did not give a shit about continuity and they just wanted to throw these films out as fast as they as fast as they can but uh, then you you know you have the saw series and they did the same thing but the continuity in the saw series is prestige amazing but it is what it is so the the deal with this guy is this prisoner of the leprechaun is that um, because it's a, it, it's the leprechaun's thousandth birthday once the leprechaun finds a bride then the prisoner is set free so the leprechaun has his eyes on this girl and the lore is that if the girl sneezes three times then he then she is the leprechaun's bride however if she sneezes three times and somebody said God, says god bless you then the the deal's off like uh, she's no longer property or possession of the leprechaun if uh, if god bless you is spoken so um, he, he sees the woman and the guy's like, please, please, anything but her. And uh, the leprechaun's like, what's the matter? Is she not beautiful enough? And the guy's like, she is my daughter. The leprechaun blows these things into her nose so she can sneeze. And she starts to sneeze and she sneezes once, sneezes twice. And then she sneezes a third time. And then the prisoner, William, is like, God bless you, my child, and then he runs away, so he broke the curse, so the leprechaun chases William down and, of course, you know, lifts William with his superpowers because, like I said in, previ in the previous video, the leprechaun can do a lot of uh, supernatural shit that I wonder why um, the leprechaun ends up in so much trouble that he does because his powers are enormous and he has seemingly unlimited powers but um he lifts the guy with his power snaps his neck and he's like you outsmarted me this time but in 1000 years with your lineage i will be back and i will uh, find my bride or whatever he says so he's basically setting up the movie to present day where he comes to the present world and uh the this girl named uh bridget is the lineage of this girl that was William's daughter 1,000 years ago. You have this guy named Cody, and Cody uh, is basically trying to um, 
find customers because he has this business called Dark Side Tours. One of those things where people go in a, in a like a guided tour vehicle kind of thing and you have this hearse-like vehicle and it, it's like a, ha a haunted spooky ride kind of thing. And this Dark Side Tours is this attraction that uh, this guy Cody is trying to bring customers into and it looks cheap and it looks sketchy as hell but that's his business. He brings these four people to go into this hearse ride, this this dark uh, dark side tours ride. He's selling it like your typical friggin' salesman. Like I, I'm I live in Ontario and, and the closest thing I can imagine is like Niagara Falls like Clifton Hill area where like everybody's trying to sell you shit. So he he sells tickets to these four people and the four people get in the hearse, the, the vehicle that's supposed to take him on a tour and then his date comes played by this girl Bridget who's the descendant of this girl from the opening of the film. Bridget is beautiful by the way. She also plays the girl in the in the opening of the film, but uh, she's a very beautiful girl. And they're supposed to have this date, this like one-on-one -on -one date night that this that Cody has been planning for seemingly weeks. So he goes to get his uncle at the bar, his uncle Morty. And Uncle Morty is a drunk, and Uncle Morty just drinks his ass off and tries to sell his business because this whole Dark Side uh, tours is Morty, Uncle Morty's business. And uh, Uncle Morty has a very hard time running it because he drinks too much and he's a fool. He clearly can't drive the hearse. Like, he literally can't drive the hearse, but he's... he. Cody takes him to the bathroom and, and puts ice in the sink and, like, dips his head in the ice water bath thing so he can sober up, even though that's not gonna work. Essentially, his... Cody's date for that night is cancelled because Cody has to now drive the hearse and uh, he, you know, tries to apologize to Bridget, but Bridget's not having it. So he's trying to do Uncle Morty's job for Uncle Morty because Uncle Morty's wasted and he's a fool. She definitely, like, makes it known. <laughs> She's, uh, like, he's using these cue cards and then she'll take the cue cards and give him the wrong one, so he's you know, on this guided tour saying the wrong things from the cue card and it's already his first time giving the tour so he already is hesitant and like not knowing what he's doing. They get to this this place where they were supposed to go. Uh, it's, this, it's this like go-kart um, arena kind of thing. And there's this guy working there named Ian. And uh, Ian just, you know, he acts all hotshot and he starts to kind of um, try to lead as best as he can. Like he sees Bridget and he's like, oh, I saved the spot for you. And Bridget's like, oh, don't you have to work all night? And, so, and he's like, not when you're here. Bridget is is going for Ian now, even though she was with uh, Cody all night and, and dating Cody. Like she's, she's seeing Cody, but now she's all attracted to Ian because Ian is manning up essentially. <laughs> and, and literally like rubbing it in Cody's face. I'm surprised there wasn't this like inter, like, uh, uh, fight scene happening between them. Why do you have to pour salt on the wound, lady? <laughs> like, Jesus Christ, I know you're upset, but man, sometimes shit happens. Sometimes you shouldn't rub it in your boyfriend's face and like try to make him feel bad, worse than he probably does by going and hitting on this new Ian dude. And it's kind of funny where it plays because Cody goes home and he's all upset, but she goes out with Ian. Um, and then at the end of the night, Ian drops her off at home at her house and she's like that was a really fun night and then Ian's like oh yeah well I heard you were you know I heard your parents were out can I come in and she's like no I, you knew I was seeing Cody I'm seeing Cody I can't I can't bring you in what are you talking about <laughs> it's like and then he, he like keeps on being persistent about it he's like oh you're such a tease and she's like, yeah, well, tease this, and she knees him in the balls. Which I'm glad she was faithful, so she totally redeemed herself in that scene, um, keeping Cody in mind and, and actually being aware that she's in a relationship. However, um, teasing Cody and, like, messing with Cody just because he made you angry uh, is not cool. And also, going out with Ian just to get some free shit, like free go-kart rides and free chili dogs, which he bought her thinking he was gonna get laid and giving her free shit and then be like, thank you, Ian, but remember I'm with Cody. You're also using Ian, so. Um, you're fucking with Cody's head and you're using somebody else. Not really cool. But I redeem her in the fact that she did not cheat and uh, she did not do anything um, necessarily unforgivable. And she didn't just like trade like dump one guy literally and be like, see ya, and then just go for the next. 
She was a moral girl in that sense, and I will give her mad props for that. She's also a beautiful girl. And then this scene at Ian's house, when, he, when, uh, when Ian's like, oh, you're just a tease, and she goes inside. Um, <laughs> The Leprechaun uses this to make like hallucinations with Ian and it plays for one of the best scenes in the film. And this is one of those scenes where I'm like, okay, now I can officially say that this film is better than the first, or I enjoy more than the first, is the lawnmower tit kill in the garage, okay? When he's hallucinating and he sees Bridget, like a hallucination of Bridget being all sexy and like stripping for him and being like, Come on, Ian, I changed my mind. You can come inside. Come inside. That, that was an accidental pun. <laughs> I didn't mean to. <laughs> you know what I mean. And uh, he does, and then like she's topless, and, and I'm, I'm assuming it was a body double with, with the breast scene and everything because her head and her chest looked a little like it looked like two different people. Ian goes and he puts his face in her tits, but her tits is actually a lawnmower because the leprechaun is making him hallucinate. So he buries his face into lawnmower wheels instead of uh, her tits, and he gets his face uh, like m mutilated. I wish they sh showed that. Um, they, it's it they show it in like shadows, so they don't. It's not too gory, but it would have been awesome to see just his face completely mutilated with practical effects and everything that would have been amazing and then the other scene i really like is um when there's the whole thing at the St. Patty's Day bar and this is why i really appreciate this film for really bringing in the irish leprechaun St. Patty's Day feel of it because there's this entire scene where the leprechaun shows up at the bar and for whatever reason nobody notices this ugly ass leprechaun just sitting at the bar and um, he challenges the drunk uncle to a drink off with with uh, fucking Irish whiskey and obviously drinks the uncle under the table because he's just literally chugging um, uh, whiskey and then you have uh, Tony Cox, the actor, uh, showing up in this. Tony Cox is mostly famous for being in Bad Santa. They're exploiting the hell out of him. <laughs> like, obviously, like, and they bring in other little people to play leprechauns in this film, in this bar scene. So you have this this uh, bar just fill up with, with little people dressed as leprechauns. So they they really milk that. And I think this, this might have been one of Tony Cox's uh, first roles. Uh, probably, I don't know. I didn't look up his filmography or anything but of course the little guys do the whole one of us chant they go one of us one of us and horror fans know that's from the film freaks from the 30s or 40s love that film and uh, that scene is famous specifically I love the barista scene where uh, the leprechaun goes to this coffee shop uh, to sober up I don't know how long this is after the bar but he has like literally like 12 cup of, cups of coffee in front of him and the barista is played by the guy who was in Saturday Night Live or no it, he was in Mad TV I remember him I'm gonna look him up because I didn't look him up before this review but uh, I remember seeing this guy on Mad TV all the time and uh, he's playing the barista and he's he's just making fun of the leprechaun because he thinks the leprechaun is a method actor even though he's like oh another method actor Woo, because he's just sick of fucking method actors showing up all over the place maybe this was in la he's just chirping on the leprechaun telling him to leave like because he's closing up and and the leprechaun is not having any of it and then he starts to uh bust out like leprechaun jokes and he's like you can play you can pay uh american express you know credit card uh, whatever you uh, find, even cash, but I would assume you're a little short. <laughs> the leprechaun is just having none of this. So you get another pretty cool kill um, where the leprechaun uses the coffee steamer to steam the guy's face to friggin' blisters all over the place. And uh, they do a good, really quick uh, practical effect on that scene specifically. It's too quick though, like they, they really don't focus on it enough. You just see him fall and his face is like filled with blisters and pus and blood and then it's like half a second and then it just cuts to something else. So um, all this time the leprechaun is holding Bridget in his lair and uh, his lair is in some forest. Again, the leprechaun can teleport in this film and it doesn't really make a whole lick of sense. But uh, the Leprechaun does have this layer, and uh, 
Bridget is there and she's just held captive there. She Every time she tries to escape, it acts like this like um, loop. So whenever she exits, she enters from like the opposite side of the room and uh, she'll go through a door and she'll end up in her, her house, but then she'll go through another door in her house and end up back in the lair. So it's very supernatural that way. I did forget to mention close to the beginning of the film when we are <clears throat> introduced to this lair. It just shows the entrance of it. But uh, this is when the leprechaun is first introduced in this film. And there's this uh, like homeless guy, bum looking guy, drinking um, Canadian whiskey. Shout out to Canada. And uh, the leprechaun takes the bottle, he swigs it, he like, spits it everywhere. He's like, blended Canadian. And then the homeless guy has a golden tooth. So the leprechaun literally just pulls the, the golden tooth out of the guy's mouth. It plays out too, where he goes to the, like the police station and he's got blood like all over his face. He's like, a leprechaun just ripped my tooth out. And then the cops are like, okay. Sleep it off, buddy, sleep it off. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Because who's gonna believe a guy got his tooth ripped out by a leprechaun in the middle of the forest, huh? Especially when he was drinking that. Canadian blended whiskey. That stuff will fuck you up. No. <laughs> I go for the Irish whiskey. So the climax of the film is just, uh, co uh, why am I so bad with names? Cody saving Bridget from, uh, this lair. And, uh, you know, they're, they're having the battle down there. There's this one scene where a skeleton comes alive and, and you know, starts to do this, this skeleton thing. They should have played with that a little bit more. Cody can't also be killed as long as he holds on to the gold coin because I don't know how that lore works. As long as Cody is holding on to the gold coin, uh, the leprechaun can't kill him for whatever reason. So <laughs> there's this one scene where he's in his one of his infamous go-karts again and he runs right into Cody, but he goes right through Cody. Um, just more B-movie lore that just doesn't need to be explained and is just, you have to go with it. If you can't just go with shit, you're not gonna enjoy these films. It's just the way it is. And then uh, Cody tricks the leprechaun. Again, how do you trick a leprechaun this smart? By giving the leprechaun a um, coin, but uh, the coin is actually uh, a chocolate, coin, like a milk chocolate coin. <laughs> so uh, Cody tricks the leprechaun with a chocolate coin and uh, therefore ends up being able to get the upper hand and stabbing the leprechaun with some kind of trinket or device that ends up destroying the leprechaun. And then um, him and Bridget leave the lair, they live happily ever after, and um, it kind of just ends with them making out and uh, her dressed in this like princess getup that the leprechaun um, had for her because later like she's she's locked in the lair but then at the end of the movie when the leprechaun comes back to the lair she has this like beautiful red dress on um and she's dressed like a bride kind of thing where she found it like i said who knows who cares <laughs> um it's just a fun goofy movie that i think merits uh a, being a leprechaun movie way more than the original leprechaun merited being and this one, even with the Irish music, like there's a lot of Irish music in this film and I really appreciated that. I really appreciated the Irish nature that uh, the director of this film brought into this film, brought into this sequel. And um, this is, this has a lot of what the first film should have had. Um, and it just, it, it feels even more fun. It feels even more uh, fun in a goofy way. And, um, like, I personally have more fun with this one. Uh, in this watch specifically, I would throw this one on, on, you know, March 17th, St. Patty's Day, way before the first one, in my opinion. This is the one that's like, happy St. Patty's Day leprechaun kind of feeling. Um, and it's, it's definitely got some more memorable stuff, uh, including the barista kill, and especially that lawnmower booby kill. Like, <laughs> you, you can't beat that shit. So that's the second one in the Leprechaun series. We are flying through these bad boys and uh, we will see how the ones coming up hold up. Only a matter of time. Subscribe to Morgan Film Fan if you like to listen to my voice or if you like my film reviews. I'll be back more soon, so stay tuned for those. Check out what's on the channel already. Stay tuned for what's coming until next review. Have a good one. Take care and cheers.